Hey there everybody and welcome to our practice test video. So hopefully you read the instructions and you have already done the practice test, filled it out on the quiz and gotten some feedback about which problems you got right and which problems you got wrong. Um, so you do not have to watch this entire video. It's likely to be a little bit on the long side because I'm going to solve every single problem. So what I would really like for you guys to do is make sure you're just watching the solutions that you really need to see. Okay, so which problems are we doing? We're doing numbers one through five. You can skip six through 10. You can actually skip all the way through 14. And then we're also gonna do 15, 16, 18, 19, and 20. So let's get started with number one. Now, in contrast to what the instructions say, they say graph the solutions to the odd problems. We are gonna graph all of these problems, but we're only doing half of them. So it kind of works out, right? Okay, so we're gonna solve this guy and then we're gonna graph it. We have x over three, in other words, x divided by three minus 14 is less than negative 22. Now we're gonna solve this exactly the same way that we would solve a two-step equation. The only difference with solving inequalities, make sure you remember this, is that when you multiply or divide by a negative number, your sign has to flip and go the other direction. Okay, so what would we do if this was a two-step equation? Well, we would get rid of that 14 first. So let's get rid of it by doing the opposite, which is to add it. Right now it's subtracting, so we're gonna do the opposite, which is to add it, and we're gonna add it to both sides. So that's just gonna turn to zero, so I'm going to exit out. And now I have x over three is less than, feel free to use your calculators here, guys. My negative 22 plus 14 is gonna equal negative eight. Okay, now I need to get the three out of there. Right now this problem says x divided by three. What's the opposite of dividing? Multiplying. So let's multiply by three on both sides. Okay, that's gonna make that go away and we're gonna be left with x is less than, let's see, negative eight times three is negative 24. All right, so this here in the box, this is my solution. Now I just need to graph it on this number line. So I'm going to put a zero on my number line and I'm going to put a negative 24 somewhere here to the left of zero. And now I'm going to think, do I need an open dot or a closed dot? Now guys, remember these signs need an open dot and these signs where you have the or equal to on the bottom, those need a closed dot. Okay. So that's very important. Here I have this kind of sign. So it looks like I need an open dot and that's just going to look like this. Now I know my x value is gonna be less than 24. It's a little confusing. X is not just one number. In these cases, it's a whole range of numbers. So it's sometimes it's easier to think of x as just being the answers. So I'm gonna say the answers are less than 24. So all the answers are off to the left. And my arrow would go that way. Now when you enter it on your quiz, you're gonna write, let's see, the x will already be there for you. You're gonna choose this sign from the dropdown you're gonna to have to type in negative 24 in the blank, and then you'll choose open from the dropdown, and you'll choose left from the dropdown. That's how to fill in your quiz for this problem. Okay, let's go to number two. Number two says negative 21 minus three X, all divided by two, is less than or equal to 24. Okay, so let's compare and contrast here. Here we've, <clears throat> excuse me, here we've got that really long fraction bar, whereas here we just have a really, really short one. So when you have the short one, you get rid of this other number first. You get rid of the number that's further away from the variable first. But when you have this really long fraction bar, you can't mess with what's inside here until you get rid of this guy on the bottom. So in this case, we get rid of the denominator first. So we're going to have to, well, right now it's dividing by two, everything is. So instead of dividing by two, we're gonna multiply everything by two. So that's gonna cancel this out we're gonna be left with negative 21 minus three X is less than or equal to negative 24 times two is negative 48. Okay, great. So now this is starting to look a little bit better. We have negative 21 minus three X. What are we gonna get rid of first? We need the X by itself. Don't, don't worry about this number that's attached to the X first. First, you wanna get rid of the one that's farther away, which is this guy. So we have negative 21, instead we're gonna add 21 to both sides. So that makes that go to zero and it says bye bye and we don't have to worry about it anymore. We're gonna be left with negative three X is less than or equal to whatever that equals. I'm gonna use my calculator again. So negative 48 
plus 21 equals negative 27. Okay, looking good. Now we have to get rid of the negative 3. Right now we're multiplying here. The opposite of multiplying is dividing. Now I want to get rid of the negative 3, the negative 3, not just 3. So I'm going to divide by the whole thing. Make sure you divide by a negative 3. If you were to divide by just a 3, then you would still have that negative there. You don't want that. You want to get rid of the whole thing. So dividing by negative 3 on both sides. Now remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. So I'm going to circle that to remind myself. So that cancels out. We're going to be left with x is, okay, I'm flipping it now, greater than or equal to. Let's see, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and then 27 divided by 3 is 9. So there's my solution. Now we're just also going to have to graph it. Just draw yourself a little graph here. You can put maybe a 0 there and a 9 there. But look at your sign here. It has that or equal to, just like these do, so you need that closed dot. That just shows us that 9 is one of the answers to this problem, because 9 is greater than or equal to 9, right? Okay, so x, or in other words, the answers are greater than or equal to 9, so it's bigger than 9, so it's going to live off here to the right. The arrow is going to point to the right. So in this problem, you would choose that sign from the drop-down, you would fill 9 into the blank, and then you would choose closed dot, and you would choose arrow pointing to the right. So hopefully that's making sense as far as how to enter those answers. Okay, here we have another two-step. Do we get rid of this minus 4 first, or do we get rid of the 8 first? Get rid of the one that's farther from the variable first. So let's send 8 away by subtracting him. So we have positive 8 minus 8, that's going to equal 0. That's what we want, that's good. We're going to be left with negative 4n is less than 40 minus 8 is going to give us 32. Okay, perfect. Now we have this being multiplied together, so let's divide to get rid of it. What do we want to get rid of? Negative 4, so that's what we're going to divide by. Okay, dividing by negative 4 on both sides, that makes that go away. Oh, and we're dividing by a negative, so don't forget to flip the sign. So n, flipping my sign now, is greater than negative 8. Okay, so we have 0 here, we have negative 8 there. We have just a greater than sign, so we're going to need an open dot. Open dot, and it says n, or in other words, the answers, are greater than negative 8, so they're going to be over this way, to the right. Okay? And I'll put a little box around my solution there. Okie doke. Let's go to number 4. Now this one, it gets just a little bit more complicated. We have to combine like terms first. So let's see, you look at one side at a time. Is there anything to combine here? No, nothing at all. What about on the other side? Is there anything we can combine here? Any like terms? Well, it looks like we have something with an x here and something else with an x here. Notice I'm also underlining the sign in front of it, right? So we can combine both of these terms because they're both x terms. So let's see, 6x minus 7x, um, what you're going to do is you're going to think 6 minus 7, which equals negative 1, right? So I'm going to say it's going to equal negative 1x, or you can just say negative x. Both of these are correct. I'll just write negative x for now, and then it's still plus 8. There's nothing to combine that 8 with because there are no other constants. Let's bring the rest of this stuff down. So negative 2 is greater than negative x plus 8. Okay, we need that x by itself, so let's get rid of the 8 by subtracting it from both sides. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10 is greater than negative x. Okay, so it looks like we're done, I know, but we're not, because the x is not by itself yet, is it? It has this negative, or you can think of it as a negative 1 in front of it still. So let's get rid of the negative 1 by dividing by negative 1. Okay, when I divide by that negative, I'm going to have to flip my sign. So negative 10 divided by negative 1 becomes positive 10. Now we're going to flip the sign point it that way. Negative x divided by negative 1 is positive x. Okay, that's my solution, and now I just have to put it on a number line. So I'll put my 0 there, I'll put my 10 there. This sign gets an open dot because there's no or equal to under it. So we'll do the open dot there. And let's see, 10 is less than x, but I like to read it from the variable. So x, or in other words, all the answers, 
are greater than 10. So they're gonna be bigger than 10, so your arrow is gonna to need to go towards the bigger numbers, which is that way. Okay, and then we're going on to number five. And here we have a fraction which gets distributed through the parentheses. Let's see how this works. So one third, and then you have parentheses negative m minus 12. We need to get rid of these parentheses first, and we're gonna do that by distributing what's in front of them, which is the one third. So one third distributes to the negative m, and one third distributes to the negative 12. So let's see, one third times negative m is gonna give us negative one third m. Okay, and one third times negative 12, well you can use a calculator if you want, um, or you could just use your math. Let's see, one third, negative one third times 12 over one, multiply that, you're gonna get negative 12 divided by three. Oh yeah, 12 divided by three, that's just four. Don't forget the negative, so it's gonna be negative four, okay? Or like I said, you can use a calculator too. So one third times negative 12 is negative four. And then that's gonna be less than or equal to negative 25. Okay, now this is looking a little bit more manageable. Let's get rid of that negative four by adding it to both sides. So that goes away, you're left with negative one third m is less than or equal to Let's see, you add that up, uh, different signs subtract, keep the sign a larger number, so you're gonna get this. And now we just have to get rid of that negative one third. We're gonna do that by multiplying by, uh, well actually if you're using a calculator, you might find it easier to divide by negative one third, and that is perfectly fine. You might have to you have a fraction calculator of some kind. If you don't, you can remember the old rule of multiplying by the reciprocal, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So the reciprocal of negative one-third is negative three. So I'm gonna multiply everything times negative three. So if I multiply this by negative three, that's just gonna equal one. Negative three times negative one-third equals positive one. So that's just gonna leave us with m on this side, which is great, that's what we want. So I'll bring that down. Oh, I almost forgot, we're gonna have to flip the sign because we're multiplying by a negative number. Okay, so let's flip the sign. And now 21 times three, excuse me, negative 21 times negative three, that's gonna equal 63. So m is greater than or equal to 63. Let's put that on the graph. Here's a zero, here's a 63. We have that or equal to under there, so it's gonna be a closed dot. And let's see, which way is our arrow gonna go? It says m, or the answers, are greater than or equal to 63, so we wanna to go towards the bigger numbers, which is off to the right. Just like that. Okay, you don't have to do the rest of this page, so let's go ahead and flip over to the next one. <clears throat> let's look at number 15. Okay, think through this with me. It says we have to write an inequality and solve it. Okay, twice a number, twice a number, hmm, okay. Twice a number decreased by seven is at least 25. There's a lot of words in there. So twice a number, that's when you double a number, right? Twice a number. We don't know what the number is, so I'm just gonna call it x. To do twice a number, you're gonna multiply it by two. So let's say two x. Okay, so twice a number became two x. Now decreased by seven, that means you take seven away from it. You make it seven smaller. So we're gonna do minus seven. And then, so all of this, twice the number decreased by seven, became this. Now that is gonna be at least 25. So it's gonna be 25 or higher. When it says at least, it could be that number or it could be higher. So I'm gonna say greater than or equal to 25 because it could be 25, or it could be 26, or it could be 30, or it could be 100. It is greater than or equal to 25. Okay, so this is the first part of the problem there. Now the second part is to actually solve it, so let's do that. Plus seven on both sides, that goes to zero. You're gonna be left with two x is greater than or equal to, uh, that's gonna be 32. Now you're gonna divide both sides by two, and you're gonna be left with x is greater than or equal to 16. And that's all you have to do. You don't actually have to solve this one. I mean, sorry, you do have to solve it. You don't have to graph it. There we go. So twice a number decreased by seven is at least 25. So it could be any number 16 and up. So you can write it like this, or you can write any 
number 16 or higher would satisfy this word problem right here. Okay, so either of these ways to say that, both are totally fine with me. Let's go on to number 16. A cell phone company offers phone service for $15 a month plus 15 cents per call. If your budget allows you to spend at most $23 on phone service, what is the maximum number of calls you can make each month? Okay, so what do we have to pay here? We have to pay 15 a month. That's just a one-time charge. You pay that once a month. It doesn't matter how many calls you make. You still pay your $15. Plus, you have to pay per call, and that's 15 cents per call. Okay, so if you make one call, it'll be 15 cents. If you make two calls, it'll be 30 cents. If you make 10 calls, it'll be $1.50. So basically, it's going to be 15 cents times the number of calls. We don't know how many calls, so let's just use C to represent how many calls. And let's start writing this in some math. Okay, so every month you know you're going to pay 15, plus you also have to pay for these calls, which are 15 cents a call. So 15 cents per call. Remember, we're multiplying the number of calls by the 15 cents, so we're going to do it like this, 0.15c. Okay, so this represents the total amount you're paying for the cell phone service. Now, we, didn't, we need that amount to be at most $23. So it can't be $24, it can't be $23.15. It can only be up to $23 and no more. So we're gonna say less than or equal to 23, just like that. Okay, so this is the first step. That is the inequality that you wanna write. Now let's solve it. So we wanna solve by subtracting 15 from both sides you're going to be left with 0.15c is less than or equal to. When you subtract that, you're going to get 8. And now, because these are multiplying together, and you want to get rid of the, neg the 0.15, we're going to have to divide by 0.15. And you might want a calculator for this. I know that I do. Let's see what 8 divided by 0.15 is. 8 divided by 0.15 equals 53 and then we got a bunch of threes over here. So C is less than or equal to 53.33. I'll just write a couple digits. That's totally fine. Now let's think about what it means in terms of the problem. So C was the number of calls, right? So C is going to be less than or equal to 53.33 calls. Now, can you make 0.33 of a call? No, calls are kind of a whole number kind of thing. You can make 53 calls, and you can make 54 calls, but you can't make 53.33 calls. So which one is it? What is the maximum number of calls you can make? Can he make 54? Oh, that'll put him over a budget. So we're going to say he can make 53 calls. And so 53 calls. Maximum. Or you could just write 53 calls. That's fine. If you leave your answer like this, that's okay with me also. Both are totally fine. Okay. I want to make a quick note here. Even if this had been point, like say if the answer had been 53.89. So it looks like you could round up to 54, right? But no, when you think of the way the problem is described, if you were to plug 54 into this equation, it's going to put you above 23. So even if it looks like you should round it up here, make sure you think of the situation that we're in, the scenario, and could he really make the 54 calls? No. So sometimes you might have to bump the number down. Just think about it in terms of what the question is asking so that you know which way to bump your number. And let me scribble this out because it is not in fact that, it is this. Okay, we're skipping number 17 and we're going to number 18. Number 18 might feel like a little bit of a relief because it's multiple choice. That's always nice to see at the end of a test. It says, uh, let me get this all on the screen. There we go. It says, a cell store sells iPhones and droids. The store makes a $40 profit on each iPhone and a $55 profit on each droid. The store wants to make a profit of at least $375 each day from cell phone sales. Which inequality describes the situation? Okay, so they're making $40 per iPhone. So you could say $40 times the number of iPhones they sell, right? 
and a $55 profit on each droid. They say droids are represented by a D, so that would be 55 times the number of droids they sell. So let's look at these choices. They all, let's see, this has 40i plus 55d. That sounds good, 40i plus 55d. They all have 40i plus 55d. Okay, so the first half of these are all the same. What about the second half? They all have 375 on them. So the only thing you have here to make a decision is the inequality sign. So let's read again what the inequality sign should be. It says the store wants to make a profit of at least 375. Okay, so would it be okay if the store made exactly 375? Yeah, because 375 is at least 375. So we want something that has that or equal to, which means we can go ahead and scratch out those two. It's gonna be either this one or that one. So if you're making at least 375, would it be okay if you made 380? Yeah, what if you made 350? No, 350 is not at least 375. So you need 375 or higher. So you want your sales to be greater than or equal to 375. So this guy would be the right answer in this situation. Okay, let's look at number 19. Mr. Laws wrote eight less than three times a number is more than 15 on the board. If X represents the number, which inequality is a correct translation of this statement? Okay, so this is where we just take a deep breath and we're like, gosh, that sounds confusing. Let's just read it again. Okay, eight less than three times a number is more than 15. Okay, so first of all, where is the variable? When it says a number, that's where the variable is. We're gonna use X. And just kind of working backwards, here it says three times a number. Three times a number, well, we could just call that three X, right? Okay. So we've got three times a number translated into three X. Moving right along. It says eight less than three times a number. So eight less than three times a number. So we need to subtract eight from that, don't we? Now it's kind of confusing because eight is first in the sentence, but if it was gonna be eight minus three X, it would be eight and then taking away three times the number or something like that. The way they wrote it, eight less than some three times the number thing, you're gonna have to write it like this, okay? And then the other half of it is more than 15. So you know you have it compared with 15. More than, it translates to greater than. There is no or equal to because it says it has to be more than and more than is just a plain old greater than. So let's see if we can find one of these that matches. 3x minus 8, not one of these guys. And here's the one with the greater than, so this is going to be your answer here. Okay, we only got one left. Let's do it. What is the greatest whole number x for which 3x equals 11? No, 3x is less than 11. Okay, let's go ahead and solve it. So we're going to divide by 3 on both sides. x is going to be less than, let me use my calculator. I'm going to just say 11, whoops, I didn't quite get that, 11 divided by 3, 3.6, and then the 6 is repeat. I'll just put 3.667. Okay, so x is going to be less than 3.667. So what's the first whole number you can get to that is less than 3.667? It's going to be 3, right? We know that X is less than 3.667. You can even put it on a number line if you want. What if that was three and that was four and then 3.667 was here, something like that? Whoops, you can't see that, can you? There we go. So if you have three here and four here, 3.667 is gonna be something like this. So what's the, gr and then it has to be, let's see, X is less than 3.667. Sorry, I forgot to graph that part. And I should use an open dot, really. There we go. So if it says, what's the greatest whole number that satisfies these requirements, you're gonna have to go down this way. And the first whole number you get to is gonna be three. So the answer is gonna be three. Why can't the answer be four? Because you would round six up to four, right? If it was 3.667, can't you round that up to four? Well, what if you plugged four into this? Three times four would equal 12. Is 12 less than 11? Is that making a true statement? 
Nope, 12 is not less than 11. So the biggest whole number you can plug in for x is really gonna be three. Three times three is nine. Nine is less than 11, so three is your answer right there. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Um, don't forget we have a study session today at 11 to go over a test review if you wanna join, that would be great. If not, totally fine. I'll send a recording out of it later. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you next time, bye.